we first need to understand what our company needs our company needs right now and also in the future and the second point would be to understand uh what our internal resource capabilities are continuously monitor them so that we understand the staff progress better so that it's a lot easier to relocate Hello everyone, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening for our listeners around the world. Welcome to the World Pro Podcast Series. Work your COVID-19 problem with our ASB MBA for working professional students. Today is skill, tomorrow is job, piloting activities, orchestrating, resourcing when the crisis is hit. Since the world hit with the COVID-19 during the end of the year 2019, our industry is immensely impacted. Today, we are all together for three of us for ASB MBA Working Professional for year 2021. I'm Joe for Asia. Uh, we have a Kun Mervin Cole from Sapura Energy Berhad. We have Kun Wan Fan ha Farah Hanani from ETA Asia Pacific. Hi, everyone. Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks, Joe, for the introduction. Uh, yep. To all of our listeners, thank you for listening to us today. Uh, my name is Farah. So I work at ETA Asia Pacific, a micro multinational company headquarters in Germany. Um, producing the company producing electrical and electronic protection device. Uh, my responsibility in ETA Malaysia mainly involves customer facing activities um, such as business development, sales. Uh, in addition to that, I manage do day to day local operation. Um, supported by regional team in Singapore. Um, ETA is already in the market for almost 70 years. We have four factories um, and then operated in 61 countries worldwide. Um, slightly over two decades ago, original office uh, was set up in Singapore in new of expanding into new emerging countries in South Asia. Obviously, we have like huge market over here. Uh, fast forward to 2013, the first representative office in Malaysia was established to serve, to serve our existing customer in Malaysia. Um, Joe, would you like to... Uh, to tell our listen, uh, listener about Asia. Sure, thank you for the Iron Woman from ETA. Yes, I'm Joe for Asia. I'm working for in-flight department, take care for the catering, in-flight amenity, and all on-board service. As you may are aware that Asia is the world leading low-cost airline who had the vision of the leading sus uh, sustainability for travel technology company in Asia. We are operating scheduled domestic and international flight much more than 165 destinations spanning for over 25 countries. Now we are fleeting about 170 of the aircraft with the broadening more than 60 million passengers uh, until now. And in Asia, we have a base in Malaysia, Thailand, Indonesia, Philippines, uh, South Korea, India, and Japan. And with our mission is to provide a high our highest quality product with the technology to reduce the cost and sending the service to care of our stakeholder with community and environment as well. As a, we aim to be like a sustainable, sustainable Asian brand. So we uh, take care in terms of like uh, economy, society and environment. So you may, you may heard about our, our slogan is now everyone can fly. We are consistently have been named by the SkyTrack as the world best or low cost ally for 11 years. And it is something about Air Asia. May I know something about for the Sapura Cup, Kun Mervin? Hi, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Uh, my name is Melvin. I'm from Sapura Energy, and we are a fully uh, integrated oil and gas service provider. During the pandemic, I manage offshore projects on oil platforms in Sarawak, Malaysia. Uh, we carry out work such as fabrication, maintenance, hookup, and commissioning for clients such as Petronas and Shell. Now for our listeners out there, I think um, some of you know the three of us here are doing our MBA, but at the same time managing our full-time jobs. Now, uh, for me, when the pandemic hit, things took a really, really big drastic change. I had the difficulty to mobilize hundreds of workers scattered from all different locations uh, to offshore locations in Sarawak. So, I think uh, both of you would agree with me that the past year has been unprecedented and challenging. So I'm sure both of you have had your fair share of challenges too. Uh, Farah, mind to brief me, what's your biggest challenge in your current role? Um, yeah, like for ETA, um, as you guys are aware that I'm the only one um, located here in Malaysia. Um, but before COVID, um, it's not really, you know, like a big issue here because um, also being the one main show, um, I received strong support from headquarters and also regional colleagues. 
they are concerned of uh, visit and activities you know that require them to be here um, physically uh, but then when government implement the travel restriction um, during the first uh, conditional movement control order the CMCO uh, this issue sort of like raised to the top uh, because um, all my international colleagues are basically stuck they could no longer travel to Malaysia um, yeah and then here we are no resources for Malaysia, um, basically human capital. Yeah, it's very difficult for you. I aware of it. Yeah, same do I. For us, like uh, if you know, like uh, they stop for uh, sitting operation for all the mm -hmm. air flight aircraft. So just so you know that the time aircraft it fly, it the time we make money, you know. But when the time that we are on the ground, that the time that we spend the money. So after one one month that we are. Uh, we have to be cease operation and only the major city that uh, we are able to onboard after that for one month past. But with our main function it, in flight department, we cannot uh, or support for any intake for the food uh, catering during the that time. So uh, what we have to do, we have to remain our value because if we don't have uh, not our value ourselves, that means we mean nothing. So we do something with our staff to be like uh, make it the uh, beginning from our insider to supporting in that time yeah wow definitely not easy for the, both of you also uh joe you had to uh stop flights and look at a new different uh, business model farah you had to work all on your own here in malaysia so yeah. uh for all our listeners out there i think uh in today's podcast we would like to dive deeper to understand how the three of us uh, in our respective company decides uh, whether to stay in our existing business or to pivot for to a new business, just like AAsia did with its food and delivery services. Uh, then we will also talk about maybe the skills that we actually use uh, to make these decisions and some of the tools that we use. For internal and external resources, I think it will be interesting to hear from Joe how you actually reassign all your flight crew for your new uh, business and for Farah, how you actually reach out to external resources to help you carry out your businesses here in Malaysia. I'll share uh, how we actually mix the both, uh, both internal and external resources in Sakura Energy for our projects. So I think let's start off with the very interesting one, Joe. How was it for A Asia? Yes, thank you very much, Kun Marwin. The thing as Kun Marwin mentioned earlier is about our internal resourcing. So since the pandemic is start and we have to see the operation, we brought that what we had been uh, bring uh, used to be a uh, good seller on on the flight, which is boba milk tea. Since that part, we bring it the boba milk tea instead of uh, delivery on the flight to be delivery on the ground, and it's, it's all, all about delivery. So as Kun Tony Fernandez had been mentioned, Asia expanding into the delivery business capitalizing on internal resourcing. As in the part, we are delivery company, which uh, we just doing in the air, but with our e-commerce company had been using us for like uh, moving a box around. So now we are just doing last mile, which is the natural extension. Is it a one part of our plan, uh, but the COVID just make it more faster and it's like uh, rising up for the set of urgency. So yeah, you may see by the, by the, by, by the our detail that according to Asia, it the resilient. It's no longer that we can stay still just the airline, but with digital travel and lifestyle company, we can make something more better. So in the part, we are traditional like a service provider, right, for the air transport. But with our data that we have had with our uh, customer and passenger, we have uh, our database from customer. We have uh, a database for reservation from the Santan for the meal. We have uh, Asia Big, we have Asia uh, Digital, and we have the Asia uh, 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 Insurance as well. So those part can be like a uh, collaborate between the, our platform. And by the horizontal right, we have a digital light for the customer experience as well. With that, we step into be with innovation to step to be like a full digital platform. How that we can do that? We have a three partner. First, very important is our, our Asia DNA is an internal employee to dry and digging in terms of information. Yeah. Second, it be our customer who using with us and a newcomer as well. We use the in the part database and we also have a forecasting database where we use our platform and we also expanding into our uh, partner, we can sell the retailer, the restaurant, the shop company, that thing that we combine together. With that, we call technology stack. 
and no, but not 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 at all. We also change in terms of processing. We call it re-engineer, we agile and develop in terms of operation to make make it faster and more concise. So it's a people and process that we have two step. Yeah, I can say that it's it's all all, the, all about it happen. But as mentioned earlier, with the COVID, it makes something happen very fast, and it's a send up agency that we input on that. Yeah. Wow, oh, very interesting to hear. Thanks for sharing, Joe. I think it's very interesting to see that you guys welcome, moved Kat. from an airline to uh, just naturally extending into the digital and lifestyle space. Uh, for Sapporo Energy, it's slightly different. I think uh, we could not really diverse so much because we still have contractual obligations, at least for my part, to deliver the projects to our clients. So um, how we actually do that is actually we maximize our internal resources uh, before going out to external resource. Uh, so I think this all comes back to the values that we have, like as mentioned by our founder, Tan Sri Shamsuddin, that uh, it's our responsibilities to look after our workers during uh, hard times such as this pandemic. Because we really feel that in good days, they are the ones that actually generate profit for us. Even though Sakura is a heavy asset company, we strongly believe that uh, value creation comes from our team itself. Yeah, so how does a company like Sakura Energy with over 4,000 uh, employees uh, handle the situation during the pandemic? Yeah, so in usual cases, uh, when we handle projects, uh, we actually move them to different locations uh, where our project is actually going on. So for example, a project that I manage range from about 100 to 300 people to carry out those works. And this model was clearly disrupted during the pandemic. Yeah, so um, I will just like to share uh, the tools that we use, a very simplified way of uh, how we look at things. So when this pandemic happened, uh, what we actually look first is actually the talent demand. So the demand actually increases a lot during the pandemic because suddenly all of a sudden I needed a lot of workers in Sarawak, but uh, we couldn't fly them from everywhere. So the natural thing to do is to say, hey, I need a lot of people, can we hire more? But I think with this tool, uh, it helps correct me to actually think about what's the future demand for the business. Will this be an ongoing thing? Uh, how long will this last? Or in the future, do we still need to hire all these people in? So I think that's one uh, aspect that maybe others might have missed out uh, without this tool. With that, then we actually look at our talent availability, which is... Uh, whether we want to focus on our internal or external resources. Like I shared earlier, we definitely going to focus more on our internal resources because we strongly believe in growing internal talents. Now, uh, because we prioritize internal resources, we learned that uh, re allocation of roles during this pandemic is part of ensuring against uh, future disruptions. Uh, that's, I think, something that we learn uh, differently than before, that we actually need to continuously monitor uh, and understand the employees that we have rather than just rely on annual appraisals so that we know how to reallocate them and we know their strengths and weaknesses. So that's definitely something we are doing very differently because of the pandemic. Now, relocating and training these uh, resources also uh, involves a lot of costs. So for some of you that know, oil and gas is a very specialized uh, industry. So a lot of our people, when we relocate them, they need to take uh, special training, special certifications before they can go to a certain project. So all those costs has to be taken into account. Now for my project, we managed to fill in a majority of the roles to our internal resources. And for the remaining gap, we actually reach out to external resources. So the great thing about external resources is um, you bring them in, they can work uh, during the timeline that you need. So in my case, it's for the project. Uh, but the challenge about bringing someone outside into the team is integrating them. So how I actually did this differently was we split our team into groups of five and it's usually led by someone from Sapura who understands the working culture, who understands the client requirements uh, and uh, just the project needs in general, the technical aspects of it. So with that, the external resource can easily adapt uh, to our working team. 
Now, there's also another thing to consider when you get external resources during the time of pandemic that there might be a lot of overlapping costs. You might be hiring someone uh, to work for our projects in Sarawak, but we might ha actually have an idling staff uh, somewhere else in Malaysia or even in different parts of the world that we usually would fly in to fill in this role. So that's how we actually look at it uh, in a big picture for a big company like Sapura. So for ETA, Farah, there's only just you in the country. How do you do it? Yeah, definitely very different than what Sapura, obviously. Um, but you you know, like it's really amazing to hear about you sharing, you know, like how you relocate um and basically integrate both external and internal resources. You know, like to take in all the consideration, all the options that you have. Yeah, um amazing what you did. Okay. Yeah, I think it's about how to make it home money also important for that as well. Yes, yes, definitely. Yeah. I agree with you though. Okay, uh, for ETA, similar like um, Sapura, basically we remain in existing business uh, because um, our product basically is uh, the product attributes that provide, uh, you know, our competitive advantage to us. Um, like in resources, it's definitely a different story. Um, being the only one here, um, initially, um, you know, we look at all possible options to have, um, you know, extra human capital to support um, myself in Malaysia. So we, we look, um, obviously, without the international colleague, um, we are left with either um, hiring a new um, basically talent in Malaysia or uh, new partners, I think, like external talent that we have, um, you know, like one of the market players, basically. Um, so the downside with the first option is long hiring process um, and talent onboarding, um, you know, like such a um, process could be taking quite a time. So there are also risks that we could not retain the talent um, and we are back to, you know, like the start point. As time is an essence here and we decided to go the second option. Um, obviously, uh, we have, um, you know, like fair comparison um, and then hence the decision. Um, however, maybe I would like to share with you like a few months before COVID, ETA launches a new global strategic direction, um, which one of them is to tag on local partner availability, which is our external um, partner. And then also their talent to expand into new market. Um, so at that time, I would say it's definitely in testing mode, um, but COVID sort of like speed up all this process. Uh, what happened is that we highlight all the specific metrics from our market research and we understand all the supply chain and energy market um, being, you know, like the market that we want to enter initially. Um, obviously, we have all the different players and our end user, you know, being in Malaysia, Petronas is obviously is a national oil company. They are the biggest one in Malaysia, uh, one of the target apart from a few others. Um, and then, um, you know, like, uh, we identify all the entity that could ease up our market entry. Um, uh, when after that, we basically get, um, you know, like this entity organization that can, um, that basically wanted to partner with us, um, also we uh, we get them on board and then train them not only skill and knowledge um, on commercial sales but also on technical so we give them we keep them um, with demo set sample that could help them to communicate with the end customer um, this solution is basic, basically multi-solving our challenges uh, not only um, it reduces our entry barrier uh, to new market but it also helping in providing additional human capital uh, for ETA business um, activity yeah, so basically that's what ETA. Uh, Sounds like you have to communicate a lot with your HQ. Uh, so I guess managing up is a skill that you use all the time. Yes, uh, certainly. Uh, you are correct, Melvin. Um, so this is where basically the part where we apply the smart and sharp, sharp, skill, uh, sharp skill. So just to share to our listener, smart and sharp skill is a concept of duality um, and basically it's also a fundamental skill that's important to all leaders uh, in today's world. So these um, skills are previously known as uh, soft and hard skills. But he, um, customer Lorena always say there's nothing soft about you know you being managed um, like managing yourself or managing others. Um, and also uh, at the same time, hard skills not just about you know technicality or the expertise in mathematics and science and so on. Both skills need to come together and constantly evolve uh, not to fit the ever-changing environment. Here in SB, we are lucky. All the students are equipped with the two skills. Um, and then 
we also call it superhuman skills. Um, in addition to constantly learning in action, um, you know, and being extraordinary and unconventional. Um, so yeah. back to the point earlier about managing up, right? Um, in EPA, we have many different stakeholders. So we have um, internal, external, you know, like partners, the end users, um, all the middle parties along the supply chain. Therefore, we always uh, practice end-to-end -end feedback loop um, to communicate and to get the feedback um, to ensure all stakeholders are fairly informed um, and make sure everyone are aligned. So this is important to avoid misunderstanding. Um, definitely one of the important parts in managing up. Uh, so yeah, tell me I, what I, 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 I agree with that. Yeah, because I think like similar to you, I think I also have internal and external uh, stakeholders. So one thing I learned during this pandemic is to develop the skill to speak their language, to speak differently depending who we are talking to. So definitely for internal stakeholders, when you are taking someone out of their team to join your project team, uh, there's a lot of uh, negotiation and persuasion that has to go on. And for our external stakeholders, we actually had to explain to them a lot what is our difficulties that we face uh, so that they can understand, then try to work out with them a way are they flexible to work around with us. Yeah. So Joe, how about for managing up in A Asia? Yeah. Yeah, it's same same to you, guy about communication and managing up. It's about how the way that we communicate with our staff. You know, we have a our internal platform. We call it a, like a workday, which it look like a Facebook. We have a Chile, which it look like a WhatsApp that we use internal. The thing that we have a managing up it is a way that we can communicate between between among the group and the share from the from the department head from the management to the all-star or to we call to all-star as well we even have a town hall every like a uh, one a month something like that and we have like a a raising in terms of the communication to ensure that our, our family it get in together at the same information is sharing so it better we have managerial relationship at work so it's about managing up so second thing second thing that we it is very important for is about adaptability I have to tell to telling to you that uh, for us we're not bracing for impact. You know, we're not we not just uh, doing only one skill. Since that since that the pandemic come, we know that we have to looking for the second job. So it's the thing that we have to be like adaptability as well because we know that we have to do something for match the explain for the income. So it's not simple for aviation staff like us, but the thing like we just do not sit back and wait, you know, we have to piloting new business and opportunity. So we, we in touch with our in function of the e-commerce platform, we open even like a, a cargo and of course we doing like a delivery. So the thing that we managing up. So how about the, in ETA, I think we also have a, uh, for adaptability as well, right? Yes, certainly. Um, you know, like um, I mentioned earlier about how we change. You know, like we tweak a little bit our original strategy, our initial strategy, and then use the 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 strategy to you know like to to tackle the issue on the human capital. So, like being a smaller firm to compared to supply in Asia, right? Um, it is certainly have to be agile and that very fast. Um, you know, like um, and when, as I mentioned about um, tweaking the strategies. And then we, at the same time, we apply um, strategy and critical thinking, you know, because uh, this is basically the enabling factor that allow us to make the changes to our initial strategy in the first place. Um, at the end of the day, our ultimate focus here to meet the end target revenue um, to ensure the business continuity. Um, Marvin, would you, like, would you like to share uh, what um, how, Sapura, about Sapura? Yeah, so I think strategic and critical thinking is definitely a skill that we actually put into place because everything just changed during this period. So I think that's the saying of a thing outside the box, but in ASB, we have the saying that there is no box. So uh, similar to what uh, Farah, you did in ETA and Joe from selling boba teas in the A to now selling on the ground. So yeah. same with Sakura also, we actually use a lot of software and calculations to do a lot of preparation. But in the end of the day, we actually had to sit down and come up with a strategic plan on how are we going to execute the project. And with this plan, we actually have to actually write it up, submit it to the client and get it approved. So talking about all of this, uh, coming back to being very heavily uh, data oriented, uh, there's another 
uh, sharp skill that comes in, which is optimization that I feel that I use this a lot during the pandemic. Uh, as most of you know, Sakura uses a lot of planning and analysis software to determine how much workers we need for a certain job. Uh, how long does it take? So this is something we've been doing even before the pandemic. Now, what has actually changed is that uh, the situation has changed. So we have to update the inputs. So with that, I'll give you an example, like a job that usually takes 10 people to work in a small location. Now you can't do that with social distancing. So we are trying to look at how can we optimize that job? Can we do it with five people instead? But when you do it with five people, how long does it take? So one of the biggest lessons we take back uh, from this pandemic is that the softwares usually remain the same, but it's always about updating and putting in the latest inputs and sharpening that skill of uh, looking at the situation and uh, optimizing it. Uh, that, uh, that actually would bring the best results that we want. So another big data company I know is AAsia. Joan, how do you guys use data in your company? Yeah, I have to tell telling you that yeah, yes, you are right that we have a lot of data. As I mentioned, like we fly more than 60 million passengers with us for since we operate. So it's about information, it's about the data basic. So if we bring the passenger database, we are bring our flight database and we, we make it like a so in the part we like a silo information, right? But now we integrate it together, we transparent and we're looking for we're looking for like uh, the key point of each of each part and we dot it like a link it between the dot and apply information to create a dashboard. So with the dashboard, you can see something clearly and you can like mon monitoring and you can forecasting it. So either thing like you make it more visible. So in terms of that monitoring and reference ploy it uh, being a part together. So with that, we more precise, precising in terms of that, in terms of approve for navigate the, the company and company performance as well. So the thing that we can use and sharpen our staff and sharpen our company. So how about Farah? Uh, 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 Joe, I think you brought a very important point like about using the data and information and let's say you use that as a benchmarking definitely definitely important point here um yeah. for eta we basically um using integration of two sharp skills um obviously this is sort of like what we're doing all the way uh manager economic and system dynamic together uh, so uh, this is actually crucial in under uh, for us to understand the market environment um taking note of all possible um option and risk uh, before proceed to research decision uh, making as a smaller firm we do not have big room for mistake therefore like we have to be really fast um i mentioned i think fast quite a few times <laughs> and then um accurate in decision making based on data that we have um you know like uh, in, in order for us to achieve our target and also um to ensure the business continuity um, yeah, so I think we we actually reaching towards the end of our podcast. It has been a very insightful sharing um, from everyone. I definitely learned a lot from both of you. Um, we have discussed um, different challenges that organization um, face during this pandemic. Um, for example, in Asia, you definitely pivot your business at uh, your business uh, model, um, and about um, Sapura, you sort of are like using the, the you know, like um, integration of internal and external resources in order to manage the demand search and also at the same time you have the underutilized uh, pool of resources and the other pools, right? So it's, it's amazing. Um, yeah, would you like to share any takeaways for our listeners? Yeah, thanks, Farah. I think like uh, what some of the best practices I hear from after speaking to the both of you and sharing our experiences is that we first need to understand what our companies our company needs right now and also in the future. And the second point would be to understand uh, what our internal resource capabilities are, continuously monitor them so that we understand the staff progress better so that it's a lot easier to relocate them when we do need uh, to relocate them. Jo? Yeah, yeah you, you're right, Kunwevin. For us, as I mentioned earlier about like a AHA DNA, our uh, even our second job, so it like a to foster entrepreneur mindset, you know, for each staff to in, to know and to learn that you cannot do in just only one thing, but you have to looking for the second job. You have to looking for all opportunity that you have had in the in terms of aspect and in terms of future growth. So you may see that in our like uh, Instagram, Facebook, 
even in Tony Instagram as well, we put like, uh, we are all in this together. We share the feeling. We inspire and we try to like uh, the put the uh, feeling that we are family. And with this uh, family, we have to pass it together. So it's not kind of thing that we have to input uh, and, and like emphasize and ensure that all people will understand and we, we can uh, make it something faster and better. Yep. Yeah, uh, so you, I think you definitely, this is, um, you know, like, definitely everyone are facing the same pandemic. Then we definitely are in this, we are all in this together. Um, but let's not forget uh, what we should remind, we also should remind our listener, you know, like the things that we should be aware not to do. Um, I guess the first one will be um, not to draw to the quick conclusion, always based on data and rigorous analysis. Um, secondly, we, um, as a normal human being, you know, like we are subjected to biases and then we have all the blind spots. Um, therefore, to be really aware, self-aware and not to be clouded, you know, by hearsay or personal judgment. Uh, to wrap things up, do you guys want to share any last conclusion? If I were to wrap everything in one sentence, I would say the new normal is to continuously get used to new normals. Yeah. yeah. For me, I mean, if the one word, it will be life, but for the sentence, will be life doesn't get easier or more forgiving, but we just have to be getting stronger and more resilient. That's what I can have. Yep. You How guys about are, you, Farah? You guys are amazing. I mean, to come up with all this, um, I, I think I will just, you know, to echo um, Charlie, our dean. Um, so Charlie always say, every day is a day one. Uh, and then Professor Rizana say, let's get smart and sharp. <laughs> All right, um, that's all for today. I hope everyone learned something from our experience. Uh, thank you for tuning in and do check out the podcast by our court in the GoPro podcast series. Thank you, everyone. Thank, thank you, you, Farah. Thank, thank you, Kun Mervin.